Okay, back by popular demand is our UAP UFO encounter clips. Mm -hmm. And I was contacted. Actually, you were in the last show in the chat room. I and was. I said, email me, right? Yep, yep. So, uh, Carol, Carol Quine. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you would, can you give us a little, first of all, a little bit of your background and go right into the encounter, if you would. Sure. Um, I am an Air Force brat. My first 10 years of life were spent being raised on military bases. And I loved every minute of it, by the way. That, that wasn't a complaint. Uh -huh. um, my dad died before um, he retired from the Air Force. We, uh, my mother and I traveled up here to Maryland to meet my brother who got a discharge from the Navy. And we settled here. Um, and I spent all of the rest of my life in the Baltimore area. I'm, I live in a suburb of, of Baltimore. Um, mm -hmm. I am 64 now. I've been in uh, higher education for well over 30 years. I spent the last almost 30 years at a urban community college in Baltimore City, uh, where I teach mostly developmental writing, uh, first year college writing, vocational writing, you know, skill classes um, mm -hmm. to my students. So. Um, I don't have children because I always say that my students were more than enough for me to, <laughs> to, to deal with. They were my yeah. children. Yeah. No matter yeah. what their age is. So, yeah. Uh -huh. All yeah. right. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about this was just in December last year. Yeah. Very not, not so long ago. Very recent. Before we get into that, um, what was your idea about UFOs prior to this happening? Um, I was a resist, what I call a resistant believer. Um, I didn't, I, I believe that these things existed. Um, and I, I have a strong suspicion that they aren't, uh, you know, made here, <laughs> not made domestically, shall we say. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't want to believe it. Uh, you know, I have real mixed emotions about this. I know that there are people in the UFO community who, you know, are, are, you know, flagging, wanting to flag these folks down or beings down and invite them in and so on. And I, I'm not so sure that's a great idea, you know, given oh. ca cattle mu mutilations and everything else. I, I, I'm not completely convinced that these are uh, benevolent beings. So that's mm -hmm. mixed emotions, I guess, is, is how I would best describe it. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into December of 2022. Yeah. Um, I explained to you in the uh, email that I sent to you describing the incident that I have a habit of falling asleep way too early in the evening and then waking up, you know, like mid morning, like around three or four before the, the sun is up. And usually I'll, you know, answer some emails and stuff. And when I get bored, I grab some coffee, grab the dog and we traveled just down the road about, you know, maybe a mile to a parking lot where there is a donut shop where lots of commuters are coming through or you know early morning traffic and stuff so i feel relatively safe there this one particular morning um, i forgot to let my little dog down in the grass to relieve itself and so i realized he was squirming a bit on the ride to the donut shop parking lot and i thought well i'll just stop at this uh, business park that I frequent where lots of dog walkers uh, use the paths and so on and so forth. I thought it's always been safe, so I'll stop there and let him out. And so that's what I did. He started pulling me down the, the walk toward a really dark area, and I didn't want to go that far down and into the dark. So I picked him up, and as I was turning around with him, something caught my eye. And that something was you've seen a street lamp before, you know, the, mm -hmm. the tall street lamps, and you know how bright and white they are. This mm. was brighter and whiter than anything I've seen before. And mm. I knew it wasn't the street lamp. And so and I think deep down inside, I knew what it was, but I went through like this little uh, index card uh, box in my mind, you know, is it, a, is it a drone? Is it a helicopter? Is it a, you know, is it, an, yeah. are you hallucinating? And it wasn't any of that. It was something very different. So I thought, you know, just in case this happens to be something, oh, I don't know, extraterrestrial, let, let me get into the parking garage. So I went into the lower level of the parking garage. It's one of those multi-tier things for businesses. And I flattened myself up against the wall and watched it. Um, 
And, you know, I forgot to say that I had unfortunately parked my car a little too far away to get to and to get out of there. And when I did park my car, I left my cell phone in there. So I didn't have, a, you know, any means of communication, any way of telling time, any camera. And mm. so, um, so I was left to just observe and to do a rough estimate of how long this all took. Um, yeah. I would say it was probably 20 minutes. I'm not a great calculator here, but I think around 20 minutes. And I can tell you, I'm, I'm a practicing Catholic and I tend to pray a lot. I do rosary and stuff. I have mm -hmm. never prayed as hard as I prayed in that parking garage. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wow. was begging God, please make this thing go away. Please, I got to get out of here, you know, and, um, and it stayed and stayed. Uh, now, and meanwhile, uh, we're, were people driving in and out of the garage? Did you notice no, that? It was so early. This was really before they started to come in. I did see the uh, area, um, it neighbors, a uh, townhouse development and a apartment complex. And so I did see one or two cars leave. I guess there were commuters yeah. going, going into Washington or something. Um, and I thought it was so funny. I watched one. And I think it was a guy. I could kind of see the, the profile. Um, and he right underneath of it, he went right under it. Oh. And, and I thought, well, you didn't get sucked up into the craft. So, you know, maybe there's hope yet. I don't know. <laughs> and how, how did the dog react? Did he react at all? You know, he didn't. And, and that amazes me because I do hear that sometimes animals, you know, start to act yeah. up when some, yeah. but not mine. I mean, we're talking about the most placid poodle in the entire world i mean you know he just he just was looking around he didn't know what was going on okay and so why don't you describe what you were looking at well when i saw it 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 was interesting because it sort of glided into position no sound mm -hmm. no emissions just that bright light as it was gliding into uh into position and i didn't mention this to you in your email i happen to remember late uh, later um it went over one of the businesses uh the areas of the business park where there was some lighting and so you could see underneath of the of the ufo or whatever this was mm -hmm. um and you could kind of see something under it like it there had something almost looked like a little bit of scaffolding or something there but hmm. i could tell that it was round um, mm -hmm. and as I said, very white, very bright, it just kind of moved over into position and just stayed and, and, and no, no sound, no anything. Um, mm. interesting, interesting. Um, so you were there about 20 minutes and, um, and then the thing, what it, you told me in the email. So why don't you continue what you saw happen? Right. Um, and I remember thinking, oh, God, please don't let that shaft of light that you see in the movies, you know, suddenly click. And guess what happened? The shaft yeah. of light clicked on. It. And I thought, OK, so this is the part in like, you know, one of those movies about UFOs where either aliens come down that shaft or you get sucked up into the ship. And I thought, oh, God, I don't want to go on. I don't want to go on any, you know, intergalactic rides this morning. Please <laughs> spare me. <laughs> and, so was uh, it like a shaft of light that came down? Yeah, it was. Um, it wasn't straight. It, it kind of spread out. You know, it, it, it yeah. was almost triangular. In fact, part of it was over. It, the thing was sort of over the trees and also over a little lane that, that, that you know, there's there's a little area there. Um, and so I know that I saw that shaft of light hit, you know, go all the way down to the pavement on the lane. I saw mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And and I and I know why I saw it because I kept thinking, please don't let anything come off of this craft. I, you know, I was looking to see if anything was going to be deposited. Um, mm. And then I guess I would estimate that maybe that stayed on about five minutes because uh, I remember calculating what do I do if I see something? You know, can I run mm. fast enough? Because I hear these things are pretty fast, you know. Um, but anyway, the, as fast as it came on, it clicked off. The light, mm. the the UFO went dark. Um, I stayed there for a few minutes thinking just because it's dark doesn't mean it's gone. Um, but I didn't, I didn't sense anything was still there. And so I made a run for it. I went to my car and got out of there. Hmm. And so you, you, did you call the police right away? 
I got to my original destination, which was the donut shop parking lot. Mm -hmm. And I parked and, I, I, you know, isn't that a strange idea to call the police about a UFO? I mean, No, that because that's funny. what I did. did I did you? the same thing. Oh, yes. good. <laughs> Good. I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. So I didn't I called, know what to do. So you yeah. Know, I mean, who do you call? I mean, you yeah. know. So um, I called, and a very nice young man answered the phone at this precinct, and he didn't laugh at me. And I said, you know, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but here's what I just saw. I said, has anybody else reported it? He said, no. We had. I think he said that there was a domestic disturbance or something that they had a call for, something like that. He said, that's all we've had this morning. He said, would you like to talk to somebody at the non-emergency number? I said, sure. You know. And so a, a woman picked up the phone. She was sort of like, you know, it was kind of like dragnet. She was just, just the facts, ma'am. She was polite, but that's all she wanted. <laughs> yeah. And so I told her what had happened. And so she said, okay, thank you. And I said, well, wait, wait. I said, I have something else to say. I said, I want to thank you for you not know, ridiculing me because I know that, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes that happens. You think that there's sure. a nut on the phone. And she says, yep. oh, she says, uh, everybody who's called in about this has said the same thing. I said, wait, uh. everybody? She says, yeah. She says, other people have seen it. She said, but just not in your area. So it had been traveling through evidently. So tell me what the exact date of that was then. What do you mean? The, the, the exact December one? what? December 10th. December yeah. 10th. 2022. Yeah. I, and I estimate it, I saw it around 630 in the morning. The sun had not come up yet. The reason I'm saying asking that is to get an accurate date for anyone else that may watch this video and may have witnessed it or know someone. So um, now let's you go back to the where you you were when this happened yeah. and tell us what you saw that made the light strange. Yeah. Um, I went back, I think it was the next day in the daylight. I'm not, I'm no fool. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. go back in the dark anymore, but I stood where I was, um, in that parking garage and I reenacted what had happened. And as much as I tried, I could not figure out how I saw that shaft of light because the trees would have blocked it. Um, so the trees w where it was, but how would you judge how far away it was from you? That would be very difficult. I did a rough estimate, um, yeah. and I figured it was about uh, two tenths of a mile mm -hmm. around that. Around so that if distance. it was indeed that far away, then it would almost seem impossible. You'd see the light shaft go to the ground or the whole craft. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you saying the whole craft or just the light going? I saw corner. what what I saw that morning was everything. Now, I mean, I saw the craft, I saw the light, et cetera, et cetera. I saw the light hit the pavement. Yeah. Um, but when I went back, I could see I could see how I could have seen the craft because oh, obviously it was elevated. But I don't see how I saw that light. Um, I could see how I could see it coming out of the craft, but I can't see how I saw it hit the ground. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. So now, what's your thoughts on? Um these encounters oh before i i forgot to mention something to you i i immediately when i got home started texting friends you won't believe what i know uh, and the first one i i texted called me later that day says you're not going to believe this i just talked to a colleague in michigan i think it was michigan and he had a sighting this weekend too so oh. i don't know if we were being visited by the folks on some planet or what but you know that that was an interesting thing um yeah so so you asked what my thoughts are yeah. Um, well, I can tell you, I uh, I have had friends suggest to me that, you know, since this whole Chinese weather balloon, spy balloon, whatever that is, that they're um, that perhaps that's what I saw. No, that's not what I saw. Um, yeah. I know what I saw. And I you it's sort of you had to be there. I know what I saw. And I know that what I saw, I'm 95 percent sure um, is not from this planet. It was something very unusual, very different. I still hold out hope that some GI was on that craft and he just had to pull over and read the owner's manual to see how to make the thing go. I'm still holding out hope <laughs> that it's human made, but I, I yeah. know it wasn't. I know it wasn't and nobody will be able to dissuade me of that. So. Yes. Well, Carol, thank you so much. I really appreciate you telling your story. Okay. Thank you for letting me do that. It was great meeting you.